am awakened body. And I hope that this video is finding you in a place of ease wherever you are wherever you've been until this moment let's come fully into this here and now so that we can learn and grow together so just arrive fully now in your body close the eyes with me and on the next inhale just feel yourself being here now give the body all the space it needs to be in this present moment in its fullness whatever it might be holding for us right now fulfilling its sacred task of feeling what it is to be me in this here and now on this plane of existence that we call planet earth so today we are here to delve a little bit more deeply into what we mean at Awakened Body when we talk about making offerings. Why do we talk here so much about the making of offerings? When we talk about doing the work of deep body listening, what we're doing substantively is scanning the body for tight places and identifying those areas of constriction. And we we use the metaphor of they become our offerings that we bring to the heart center to be laid upon the halt, heart altar so that they can be churned in the moment to moment of our lives. Likewise, when we're out in our day, just living out in the world, there too, we talk about taking of our gifts and our talents and just laying them in the present moment as our offering, no more, no less. So why this metaphor of offerings? First of all, it's important to remember that the bringing of offerings of sacred gifts, this was the primary spiritual posture of the ancient world, certainly of the world of the Hebrew Bible on which Kabbalah is based, and also of uh, Hindu tradition, still to this day offerings are brought. Ancient peoples would do their work in the world, primarily amassing a very, very, very small amount of possessions which were themselves alive, whether that was the raising of livestock or the growing of food. They would take what they had or the the work of their hands and then they would take of the very best of what they had and that very best, whether it was a beautiful piece of art or choice first fruits or the pick of the livestock they would bring that as an offering to source to deity however it was that those ancient peoples imagined uh source whatever name that they might have given to god or gods at that time what they did was make offerings The beauty of the posture of the making of offerings is the humility that it has embedded in it. First of all, I toil. I toil with my effort and with my gifts in order to arrive at a a thing of value, something that I've poured myself into, that I love, that I probably want, and I take all of that investment that I've poured into it, all that meanness, and I bring it and I give it as a gift from a place of open-hearted generosity. So there's humility built in and there's generosity built in. Beyond that, the making of offerings helps us as people to work with our tendency to want, to strive, to grasp, and at its deepest level, to uh, assert our will as opposed to surrendering to divine will. So here at Awakened Body, we coach you to lean in to your passion, to lean in to your authentic desire. And this is different from the guidance you might receive 
for example, uh, in Buddhist tradition. But we, informed by Kabbalah, informed by Hindu Tantra, we say that you are born, you are made just this way because this is how Source wants you to be. And the human body, it is a desirous manifestation. There is polarity built into this plane of existence we call planet Earth. With polarity comes charge, with charge comes desire. And indeed, the deep work of Kabbalah, the deep work of the Kabbalist, is to center ourselves within that charge between masculine, feminine, positive, negative, light, dark, even good, evil, that polarized charge that is what characterizes planet Earth. We situate ourselves right inside of it. And we say, I am here to stand in this dialectical tension in order to bring holiness to this charge. I become the conduit. I become the priestess that presides over the sacred union of opposites. That's what we're here to do. And when we're people just walking around in the day-to-day of our lives, what that feels like is wanting. And yet, when we lose ourselves in our wanting, when we lose ourselves in our desire, the result is addiction. The result is a loss of power, a loss of centeredness. We become she who's chasing after rather than she who is splendidly divinely doing the sacred work of presiding over the union of opposites. The posture of offerings is what we call the tikkun. It is the corrective action. How do I find right effort in my life? How do I face what I most want and hold it as a beautiful diamond rather than turning it into an idol, something I lose myself in. The answer is that I hold it as my offering. I take it in my palm and I say, this is a piece of me. Here I am in the inner work of the body, laying it on the heart altar and in the outer work of the world, laying it on the altar of manifest reality, here I am present moment. I hold this piece of me, which is my wanting, and I lay it in your hands, beautiful, splendid, here and now, manifest reality, present moment, Shrina. I offer it to you, head bowed, with humility, hold it for me, keep it for me, I trust it to you. And in doing that, as a human, I say, I surrender my will to yours. The Hebrew invocation we use for this is ken yehi ratzon, let cosmic will be the will that governs this manifestation. What's the difference between cosmic will and personal will? Personal will comes from ego. In the Kabbalistic sense, it comes from the interplay between Netzach and Hod. The part of me, it's located in the Hindu system, we call it the third chakra. It's located in the area of the kidneys, of the liver. It's the lower mind as Kabbalah discusses it. It is the part of me that on one hand recalls my eternal divine nature, but trapped in the matter of the human body, this here and now, that can so often ring as, I must be remembered. Let me not be forgotten. In other words, plain old ego consciousness. And on the other side of the dialectic, we have hood, the human capacity for the perceiving of beauty for awe that comes with beauty, 
Our capacity for hod also holds our ability to pray. And what we're talking about right now with sacred wanting is prayer. And I'll, I'll finish this video with some direct instructions around prayer, around how to pray. But we're talking here about hod on the left, which is on one hand, in our highest manifestation, it is divinely, it is divine splendor, beauty. In our highest manifestation, it is our ability to stand in awe of the tremendous beauty of this plane of existence. Beauty that is created thanks to the multiplicity of this place. We know in a Kabbalistic sense, what's real and most true is Ayn, the limitless, boundaryless, radical unity of source. But the radical unity of source, the best metaphor we have for it is white light, right? It just looks like a great big sameness. There is no perceiver and there is no perceived. It is only thanks to the multiplicity of the earth plane that we can perceive beauty. Think about a field of wildflowers and how beautiful it is, each one different from the next. So in the highest manifestation, hood is beauty and our ability to perceive beauty. But in the lower manifestation, we get bogged down in the part of us that's matter, that has forgotten eternity, and that is distracted by the limited, limited perception of here and now. Then Hod becomes our, uh, our instinct to objectify, our instinct to possess, um, our instinct to see only surface and not depth. And so we have here this, uh, what we're standing in ego self, which is held in this tension between Netzach and Hod. That is where our wanting, when we're not working with it through spiritual practice, our wanting is held by ego. And the ego, it goes out and it takes, 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 takes. It, does, it forgets that the world is a splendid garden of abundance. And it says, Instead, this world is mine for the taking. And we know that that posture of conquering the world, all it does is get us another round and another round and another round here on this earth plane where we have to keep playing in the space of duality so that we can finally, finally, finally remember that we are here to be Kabbalists, to engage in the sacred task of unifying opposites. How do we do this? Our work at Awakened Body is in feeding the ego to the heart. We're doing the work, and this is why we make offerings within our deep body listening practice. We want to take the tightness, the stuffness, all of the places in our body that we have forgotten our God self, we bring those places one by one to the heart altar. We offer them up, and in offering them up, we release that bound up energy, and we remember why we are here. These offerings, they are both our limited self, but they are also the very reason we're here. I was born into this exact here and now to get stuck in exactly that way so that I could bring that stuckness and lay it on the heart, heart altar so that that energy could be released and I could remember that I am a co-creator with the divine creating this majestic here and now. Out in the world, when I move from ego and I go and I take, 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 take and I amass, 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 amass all those beautiful things and all those ways that I hope to be remembered, then I lose myself. I become myself just another object to be conquered by some greater creative force. But if I remember that each of my desires, my wanting, my prayers, they are my offerings. I lay them down as offerings on the altar of the here and now. I say, here I am. You, Shrina, Kadosh Baruch Hu, you, God, you made me this way. You gave me these gifts. 
the best I can do is offer them with pure heart, with a generous spirit in this here and now. And they are for your taking. They are for the taking of the present moment. I cannot be too attached to the outcome. I cannot be too attached to how my gifts might be received. Because when I do, when I get attached in that way, then I forget that that the weaver of this here and now is you. Source, Kadosh Baruch Hu. The most I can do is craft my particular collection of cells and maybe a little bit the energetic overflow I put out around me. But that's it. And in that I am saying I from this set of cells, from this here and now. Hopefully I'm doing good spiritual work and I'm saying I less from the ego, from that netzachod tension and a little bit more from the heart center, from the balancing of tiferet with abundant chesed, loving kindness and my ability to erect boundaries, gvura. Hopefully I'm saying I from the heart center But I can't help it. I'm a person. I have loyalty to this particular set of cells. And it is only by surrendering my will to divine will. Saying, Let the will of source create this moment in highest potential. It is only by surrendering in that way. By coming in a posture of humility and giving up offerings of my gifts that I can become a part of the splendid, highest manifestation fabric of this present moment, this here and now. So by making offerings, I surrender my will to divine will. I bring of my gifts, but I offer them with right effort, not with striving, not with grasping, but with humble, right effort. I act in faith knowing that no other creature walking on planet Earth can do what I can do, can give what I can give. I am essential. And yet, I am only one tiny piece in the radical, infinite multiplicity that is this particular here and now. And so all I can do is sing my soul song the best that I can and hope that I join with the harmony of the soul song of the beautiful present moment being woven just right now by source. This singing of soul song, this is authentic prayer. Authentic prayer is rooted in wanting and wanting is connected to ego. I am made to want If I don't want, I can't know passion. I can't feed fire. I won't feel radically alive. The way to turn my wanting into soul song, highest prayer, is to do it through this practice of the making of offerings. I offer up my personal preference as a gift to source. I show up singing my soul song, trusting that it is essential and that it is heard. And in this way, I pray. I pray from the place of Hod, the uh, redeemed ego. And I say, please God, please goddess, hear my wanting. This is what I want this day. And I bow my head in humility. I trust that you hold me in highest good. Take my wanting as my offering. Know that I am mustering every ounce of courage I can in order to call in the widest expanse of blessing that I could possibly imagine. That is how I do my part. I do it from a posture of humility. And I give you, I offer you my prayers. And I beg you, bless me. 
That is the deep spiritual work of the making of offerings. Inside the body, drawing on, collecting, gathering up. And this is what we instruct in our morning practice, if you want to try it with me tomorrow morning. Gathering up tight places in the body, trusting that those tightenings are there specifically so that I can learn the lesson that I am ready to learn when that tightness arises in my consciousness. My body, it held it for me there when I couldn't process it because the present moment was too, too, uh, too much, too overwhelming, too rich, too many things. I was working on something else. I was riding the, the splendid wave of being the cutting edge of thought. Whatever it is, my body held it for me. And in practice, when that tightness comes and I feel it in my sense of awareness, I bring it and I lay it on the heart altar as an offering, trusting, receiving, loving the fact that my body is helping me to do this work. When I'm moving about in the world, I offer up my gifts from a place of humility as a way of singing my soul song and contributing to the song of the world. May you go on your way today. I bless you with courage. I bless you with the deep knowledge that only you can sing your soul song. And I hope that you will offer up the essence of who you are today and every day. And I hope you'll join me for the deep work of waking up in these splendid bodies that are themselves crafted in the image of the divine. Blessings to you. Mm -hmm.